back with another lengthy I Am Mercy Rachel's video, as most I Am Mercy Rachel's videos are. Um, but I'm actually pretty excited about YouTube for this, because like, usually they have like a specific genre, and then they're pretty interesting. So, three summer camp horror stories animated by I Am Mercy Rachel. So, personally, I have gone to camp when I was younger, like it was like a sleepover camp, I think, for two nights. And I remember I was like crying, because I was like, no, I'm, not, I'm gonna be away from home. Like, I get like really homesick, and I cannot like be away from my bed. Like, ugh, when I go to, like, other countries or other places to, like, visit or whatever, then I can't, I can't do sleepovers. Like, when I was younger, I stopped sleeping at my friend's house and I cried because I wanted to go home. Even though my, her house was right down my street. Literally same street. But I was young, no one answered the phone. We called, called, called my house, but no one, no one answered. So we figured that they were asleep, so I had to sleep, stay, stay there that night. Because, of course, I was young, I didn't have a key or anything like that. And I couldn't just walk home myself. So, again, it was right up the street, but still. I don't know the time it was, probably like 9 or 10 p.m. But that's going to be it, though, for that little thing either. But, yeah, I do remember going to summer camp a few times, or once or twice, probably. Probably just once, because, like, I never really liked camp, especially if it was, like, an all-day or, like, overnight camp, because I do not, like, I just, I don't like staying overnight, apparently. Like, I just told you. I don't like sleepovers. Even the ones down my house are kind of like, eh, I don't really want, like, someone, annoying friend being here, because I'm like, I can't do whatever the hell I want. If I want to do YouTube videos, oh, I can't because my friend's here. If I want to freaking, I don't know, watch a movie, I'm like, hey, my friend's here. Um, maybe they want to do something different or play a game. Maybe I don't want to play a game, you know? Anyway, that's the off topic. But basically, summer camp horror stories. I mean, I can definitely imagine some, probably some, like, kids getting kidnapped or something. Or almost killed or something. Or, like, uh, some kind of, I, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to find out and see. But 20, 22 and a half minutes long. Three summer camp horror stories. Let's get right into this. It should be fun. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if this post is too long, long but, but I've never shared this with anyone. So and it seems like, like the best place story. to do so. When I was around nine, I went to summer camp at the nearby YMCA for a few summers. It was a day camp, and there were different camps you could do, such as water sports, crafts, canoeing. It's fun. Each camp lasted for about one week. It was overnight? I started the summer mm -hmm. by taking one of the craft camps. Mm -hmm. Nope. A special one that lasted two weeks. I was really excited about it, but I was nervous mm -hmm. because I didn't know anyone else in my group. No. And I'm very shy. Yeah. And the first day, I managed to make friends with an older kid who was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. He was 17, I believe. I'm not sure what his disability was, but he was socially awkward and kind of gave off a creepy vibe. I tried my best to be nice to him, because nobody else talked to him. Mm. But eventually, he started to make me uncomfortable. How? Oh. First, he'd start by talking about how much he hated being in the wheelchair, because it made his back hurt. He liked to be able to get out at the end of the day and stretch, that's as fair. well as do some exercises with this physical therapist. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. And I'd just smile and nod as he talked about this, so not creepy. knowing what else to say. Mm. At some point, I mentioned to him how I was a dancer and really liked acrobatics class. He asked me to show him some of my moves, so I did a cartwheel. He told me that my legs looked beautiful when I stretched them out like that. Yeah, that's creepy. Being a kid, Nine. I didn't think much of the comment. Nine. I but I started me. getting uncomfortable when he began telling me how much he liked my hair, or how white my teeth were, or how cute I was because I was so little. And one day, he was talking about stretching outside of his wheelchair and mentioned how good it would feel if someone were to walk on his back. You'd be perfect. Just the right size. Would you do that for me one day? I forgot he's 17. I'd she's 9. I'd love to have you on top of me. Oh, God. That's okay. He smiled creepily when he said this. Yep, there you go. So I awkwardly changed the direction of the conversation <laughs> nope. by telling him how I used to do that for my dad. I was young and stupid and probably shouldn't have told him that. He got really excited and started talking about how much he loved it and how good it must have felt for my dad. I bet he loves having his little girl on top of him like that. He reached out to me at this point and put his hand on my knee. Mm -hmm. nope. We were sitting by a table in the craft cabin. I awkwardly shoved it off, there you go. moving away a little. He smiled and started talking about how good it would feel if I were to do cartwheels on his back and jump oh on God. him. Maybe even lay down on top of him and rub his sides. Yeah, okay. I got really uncomfortable at this point, 
And luckily, she's nine. my mom drove up a moment later. She's nine. So I was ready to leave. Nine. This was on the weekend, and the camp was going to continue to the following Monday. We're supposed I to didn't camp mention anything herself. to my mom. So I guess you don't know how she's sleeping. Because I figured it was just lonely and awkward, and didn't yeah, mean to be creepy. But that was definitely creepy. But when I got to the camp Monday, he immediately came up to me. I was so upset that I couldn't see you this weekend. I missed my little girl. My little girl. I smiled and awkwardly walked away. That's... But he followed me. No. We were all going as a group to the craft cabin. Mm -hmm. And he came up next to me and asked if I wanted to sit in his lap. No, I don't. I went to the cabin with him. It's the last thing I wanted to do. I politely declined and managed to avoid him for the rest of the day. Until I was walking to my mom's car at the end of the day. Good. He came up to me. Grabbed my hand. And pulled me towards him. Excuse me. You really hurt me today. How would you like it if I hurt you? Oh my god. I yanked my hand away and walked quickly to the, the car. Fuck? I told my mom all about it as soon as I got in the car. She immediately drove over to the camp office and spoke with the camp leader about it, who I shared my story with. Good. He assured us that he would take care of it immediately. There you go. As we were driving away after the meeting, I saw two counselors go up to the boy and lead him into the camp office. Mm. The look on pissed. his face looked like he was going to murder someone. I never saw him again after that. I was told that he was kicked out of the camp and never allowed to return. And for the rest of the week, the camp counselors would check on me and make sure I was okay. Mm, good. So creepy boy from summer camp, I hope you got your issues worked out and that you're finally living a happy life now. So watch him be faking the wheelchair. Like, I'm not saying that he is, but like, what if he's faking it? This is my first post here. What this experience music? I'm still music. gives me chills to this day. I actually have a few other camp encounters that I can share if anyone's interested. Okay. Mainly occurring along the Appalachian Trail with campers. North Georgia is a mighty interesting place. I love this music. A few years ago, I worked at a Jewish summer camp in North Georgia. Go bad. As many of you that? might know, Georgia is a fairly conservative state, as well as being predominantly Christian. And there were small Jewish communities and a few summer camps. I'd say this camp was more culturally Jewish than it was religious. There were no religious requirements, nor religion-specific focus. Okay. Rather, it was a place for kids who were often in the minority to come to a camp that allowed them to meet some other kids like them. Staff came from all over. We had many Australians, lots of Brits, a few Israelis, and people from various areas of the USA. It's kind of cool. Each night around 10, most of the staff was able to go out on the town for a couple of hours. Enough staff remained behind to watch over the cabins. We rotated. This particular night, a group of about five of us decided to go to a local bar to grab a few beers. Okay, we just bought it. had been okay. a hot day, and was a humid night, so we decided to sit outside on the patio. For some backstory on the town, generally, we were extremely well received by the community, despite some differences. We brought in lots of revenue for the town during the summer. We bought supplies at the local Walmart, and often took the campers on tubing trips or occasionally out to dinner after a long hike on the Appalachian Trail. Okay. It was midsummer, so we'd been out to the bars in the area many times already that session. The five of us sat around a table, drinking and discussing the events of the day, as fellow employees typically would after work. About 30 minutes in, Who's that? a pissed. white man in his oh, 20s came he... up to our table. I distinctly remember a jagged scar on his cheek, but didn't think much of it at the time. That looks terrible. He introduced himself then told us that he was having a party that night at his place. Anyone can come, he said. Who the fuck are, who the Black, are you? white, gay, straight. I found it odd that he'd open his speech with that disclaimer. Yeah. Of course the party should be open to everyone. Right. Why did he feel the need to specify? Yeah. But we'd all had a few beers at that point, and were feeling pretty loose. Don't say us. He talked for a bit longer, and nothing really seemed off. That, that, that whole thing we were seems working off. At a camp in the area. Why'd you tell him that? Why'd you tell him So that? he'd probably be heading back soon. 
Don't tell him now. He, now he knows where to go. An hour later, our group went out to the parking lot to get into the car. As we approached it, we saw the same guy come out of the shadows. Out, out of the shadows. He had a buddy with him, oh, with a shit. shaved head. And they both were His expression now. was incredibly hateful. His eyes had changed. He pounded his fist into his what? hand. The hell then do we... took off his shirt and revealed a poorly inked SS tattoo. And my stomach dropped. One of the bigger guys in my group, Kevin, immediately reacted by pulling a knife out of his oh, back pocket. Okay, there you and go. At summer camp, most of us staff carried knives. Just in case. We spent a lot of time building campfires and the like. And asked what they wanted. <laughs> He's like, bitch. The original guy I started shouting some anti Semitic remarks and told us he was going to beat us down. Kevin started walking <laughs> You're toward just like, the two okay. guys, but we pulled him back. He told us his buddies were on the way. Sure enough, some more guys started walking into the parking lot. Oh my god, now it's 7 It's all kind five. of blurry from there. I remember jumping into one of the cars, pulling Kevin with us. It felt like we were surrounded, though there were probably only seven or eight of them. Rocks were thrown at the car, and we sped off. Shit. And my heart was beating like crazy. We never went back to that bar. Good. On the bright side, when we told the story to the competing bar in town, the bartender lined up six shots, cheersed us, and said we'd always be welcome in his bar in that town. That sounds Had no nice. more problems in the town itself. But when I took some campers up on a two-day hike up the Appalachian Trail, that was another story. I'm glad they're okay. I began working at a summer camp like several years. Ago. What the hell did I do to you? Who the hell did I had a history as a camper at this camp, and I loved the place. By the time I was 19, I had done what I never imagined I'd do, and became the camp's one and only medic. As medic, I no longer hung out with counselors and the other younger staff as much. If I had free time, I spent it helping out in the kitchen. And this year, there was kind of a big turnover in staff. A longtime cook moved on from camp, and no one was hired over the year as a replacement. So Stupid. come summer time, we were scrambling to find someone to cover that position. Well, I'll hire someone. I guys. met two of the interviewees. One a middle-aged woman who, in my humble opinion, seemed like the perfect get-it-done kind of person you'd need as a cook. Mm -hmm. The other, a tall man, mid-forties, with piercings galore. And a loud look at me personality. No, 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 no. The woman I fancied was not chosen. I think my boss was upset by her surprise when she saw how small our kitchen was. Mm. Two ovens to feed 150 people. And the camp was introduced to our new cook. Oh god. Chef Vincent. Of course, the pervert. Everybody loved Chef Vincent. Except for me. The instant I met him, I got chills down my spine. You know when you hear a strange sound in the dark, and your body's screaming at you to run or hide or something? That's how I felt every second I was in the meal hall or the kitchen. So you kind of have like red flags or like bad that been like a second home to me were feeling less comfortable and more get me the fuck out of here creepy. <laughs> right? Chef Vincent was abrasive. My first time talking to him, he said something like, That's your medic? in response to my color-dyed hair. He tried to be fancy, but his meals were dull and soggy. Ew. After watching him prepare one, so I one stopped him. eating them altogether. I don't think the man had gone to school in his life, let alone taken a food safety course. <laughs> right, ew. I survived off an occasional bite of safe food on the table, like packaged crackers so and bread, kind of trying to, like, things kill I handled something. directly and a storage of cheap meal replacement drinks in my room. It sucked. I'm an extremely protective person, especially my younger co-workers, who were basically family to me. Mm. Chef Vincent's kitchen staff were 16 or 17 year olds, and I was afraid for them. I'd watch from outside the kitchen and talk to them discreetly, making sure everything was okay. Honestly, at this point, I was worried that I was being unfair, since everybody else loved him. Maybe I was the one beating the creep. But I couldn't get over the comments he made, and the way he talked to me. He would touch my shoulder, and stand all tall, 
and lean over me when he talked. No. He told me about his kids and how they have to stay with their grandma now and about his many years of experience. Okay. Which I always suspected were due to being a prison cook or something like that. <laughs> he was extremely arrogant. I wanted to punch him, to be honest. But eventually I just stopped going in the kitchen and even stayed away from the mess hall mm. unless others were in there with me. If he tried to talk to me, which he did so after that like, night on the deck, like, what are you doing I with ignored life? him and left the room. What but I still thought I was being a bitch, to be honest. No, he's he's a pervert. Then thing. Chef Vincent told one of the kitchen staff to really molest that in reference what? to stirring a pot or whatever. Who the hell uses that one word? One member of the kitchen staff came to me crying about how much he was pushing them in the kitchen. Oh, molest that soup. Soon. All three kitchen staff were describing incidents of complete disrespect. His refusal to learn their names, use of inappropriate words, and calling them his little girls, no. and the boy, John, Jack, Jehovah, whatever. This pushed me until I told the boss about how uncomfortable this man made me. I didn't bring the kitchen staff into it, since I advised them to tell the boss on their own. Mm. Then one day, fellow staff member came up and said that Chef Vincent said I won't stop following him and that I should be dating him. Confused and angry, he's he followed up with another like staff 16 or 17? who said the chef was talking about the camp dog. Still concerned, yeah, okay. I continued with my day dog when Chef ass. Vincent came to me and told me the story, laughing with a hand on my shoulder the Don't whole time. Don't touch me. I said you must really like me. <laughs> He also made veiled sexual innuendos constantly. Oh yeah, I like things hot. And complimented me, like, more than is appropriate. I got chills every time. Fuck off, dude. Right? This has been going on for a week. A week. In the second week. And he's not fired yet. I'm asleep yet. in the medic's cabin. Oh no. It's got a bedroom separated from the rest of the office by an unlockable door. And I'm the only one who stays there. Of course, wait, who's that? And my nights are long. Lots of sick campers and whatnot. And this particular night, it's 4 a.m. And I've finally gotten to bed after being up for an hour with a sick kid. I'm exhausted, and I'm asleep the second my head hits the pillow. Two hours later, so I'm 6 awakened by a loud thumping on my door. Oh my god, if it's that perfect, I'm not... staff use the walkie-talkie to contact me. Exactly. Even at night. So I'm pretty concerned, and I crawl out of bed. And why aren't the curtains the closed? Why are they open? It's Chef Vincent. What the frig do you want? I hesitate, not wanting to oh open the door God, for him. man, what is this So he want? hammers on it again. He looks angry. I'm angry. It's 6 a.m. Right? What the you... fuck does he want? R right? Finally, I open the door, just to crack, and look out. He's loud. I have to do laundry. My office houses the washer and dryer for the camp, because I do laundry when kids wet the beds. So every morning, laundry is reserved and staff needs to ask me to use it. This particular week, we'd had water problems, and the laundry couldn't be done, so oh. I had a lineup of camper things needing to be washed. Mm. And here he was, 6 a.m., demanding to use the thing. When I pointed out the water issues and how camper stuff comes first, he got aggressive and yanked the door open. He's big and intimidating, and I stepped backward to avoid him. And he looked at me and said, I'm the important one around here. <laughs> yeah, okay, no one, I know it gives a fuck about cold. you. It was 6 a.m. Fucking stupid. I had just been told by a creature from the depths that I, who had worked at the camp for five years, was unimportant compared to him. Right, you punch him in the face it's right there. It's hard to convey body language secondhand. Fucking asshole. But he was sorry, aggressive to the degree that I, I flew cannot. past my usual response to this kind of situation. Anger. And went straight to fearing for my safety. Okay. His face is so punchable. It's I can oh. be an anxious person. But I don't get genuinely frightened by a lot other than horror movies. So what scared me more was how scared I was. Hair on end. Adrenaline pumping scared. His gaze was absolutely predatory. And there was nothing about his presence that made me think he saw me as more than something to be toyed with. At this point, my mouth was opening, and I knew I'd say something I'd regret saying 
especially locked in this building alone with the one man who creeped the shit out of me from the exactly. second I met him. Exactly. So I forced out one word. Okay. And backed my way into my room. He watched me the whole time. I go to my room, and the tears push behind my eyes. But I'm too tired for them to actually come. I'm tired of this frustration, of this anger, and this fear. I had warned my boss about it. Boss was always saying, listen to your gut. And I was. No, I but am. did they do anything about it? No. Fucking assholes. I Fuck. pushed a Fuck chair you. against the doorknob, not knowing if it actually works to lock doors like it does in the movies, and curled up in my bed. I told my boss the following morning. Fire him I called it inappropriate and said it wouldn't happen again. Yeah, okay. But that was all I heard of it. What the fuck are you going to do about it? Fire him, idiot. I lived in constant anxiety, which meant puking a lot and hiding in my room. When he talked to me, he had a smile that would make even the most daft of people pause for concern. Oh my god, fuck off. While before this I had attempted to be polite, I always, always left from then on. That week, or maybe the next, it all blurs together at this point. All of the staff were upstairs, save for a few staff monitoring kids in their cabins. Okay. I was called over by a fellow upper-level staff member, who informed me that Chef Vincent had been fired. Finally? His police chief. Oh my god. Which they hadn't decided to do until after he was hired. What? To come back. He didn't pass his vulnerable sector check, a.k.a. He was not allowed to work with or volunteer with kids in any capacity there you go. due to prior crimes that all let you mull over. There you go. Camp was effectively on lockdown while he was to vacate the premises. I lost it then. Tears came and wouldn't stop, and I couldn't breathe. My whole body went fuzzy, and as I was led out of the building by another upper-level staff member, where I managed to gargle out something along the lines of, he made me so anxious. And no one else saw it. I'm just so relieved. The panic attack lasted for a solid 30 minutes. When I saw him exit the building with his belongings, I hid in my office. When I finally came out, he was gone. They kept this all under wraps. They didn't tell the kids the cook had gone. Didn't tell the parents just in case something had happened. My boss didn't even tell the board of directors. It was a huge liability. Your boss sucks. Still is. And while I'm glad that my anxieties about this man were completely justified, I'm filled with anger over the fact that he was hired without a criminal record check and the fact that my feelings were repeatedly dismissed. Right? Camp went from being fun. the only place in this world where I felt completely safe and comfortable to, the opposite. to a strange place where I felt like I was living a nightmare. Exactly. I felt inadequate and constantly upset. It's funny how having your fears ignored can make you feel like there's something wrong with you. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore, and I quit on account of my mental health so I could see a professional more often. Good. I still have fears about that man finding me, which I feel is irrational because he never actually abused me or anything. He just made me shit myself in anxiety and was incredibly aggressive and over-sexual. My parents joke about it being a Cape Fear kind of situation. No, 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 about no they're joking about it. Better, but only for a little bit. I don't think anyone realizes just how terrified I was. To this day, I still am. That looks fucking terrifying. I cannot look at that anymore. Pause it for a second. I want to see if no, that's it. I know it's not what's gonna happen. Shit, that was ugh. that guy freaking made me so mad. Ugh. You honestly have to be careful. I don't care if you're walking out of summer camp. I don't care if you're going to summer camp. Be careful. And if you see any sus people, be aware. Report it. Apparently, you reporting it does nothing, which pisses you off. Because it's kind of, because it's kind of like I'm telling you that there, there's an issue here, or potentially like a pervert here, and then 
on top of that, you didn't even get a criminal record check on him, and then people are warning you that he's being a pervert, and then you're kind of like, oh, it's fine. You don't even have the criminal record check back yet, and, and you're assuming it's fine? Like, wouldn't that be a red flag? Oh, I don't have this yet, and people are complaining about this. Oh. Fucking idiots. People just don't take anything seriously. Like, apparently, they just don't take anything seriously. They, they just try brushing it off, so I have the hiccups. They, they try brushing it off as if it's nothing. And, and, and then shit happens, and then it's like, oh, yeah, sorry, I was wrong. Well, like, what the fuck? Like, do your fucking job. Like, and sorry, I'm swearing, but that freaking guy p p pissed me off, and the freaking director, boss, freaking garbage. <sighs> Ugh. I'm pissed. Oh, I'm so glad he he was fired though. I'm so glad that she she eventually felt safer or you know safe rather than that she quit right. So she obviously feels a lot better hopefully. So I'm really glad for that at least. Um, that's gonna be it though for that. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have any um, comments on this video, let me know. If you have any like thoughts on it, let me know in the comments below. If you have any suggestions, feel free to message me on Instagram or in the, or in the comments. I don't even care anymore. Um, and that's 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 gonna be that. So. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I'm stretching because that was a long video. So, guys, be careful. Oh, by the way, the, the summer camp I went to, by by the way, like I don't know if people actually like do the camp, but like, in, in, in the tents, I would never sleep in a tent. Like, I don't think anybody... Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some camps or whatever that like you actually have to get, like, get in a tent and sleep outside. Like, I would never do that. Like, I was sleeping in the building with like a bunch of like bunk, bunk beds and stuff, and like with, obviously... A guy's cabin, a girl's cabin, and, and all that, and I can't even, like, I can't even imagine how, how, how I did that. I, I remember I was ta talking to some of the, like, people, some of the guys in the room, and then, yeah, it was normal, it was fine, but, like, I don't know. I don't recall anything, like, creepy or sus. I just remember I had to take melatonin, otherwise I probably wouldn't be able to fall asleep, because it was, like, a strange place, so I had to take somebody to help me sleep, but... From what I remember, nothing was really creepy or out of the ordinary, from what I knew, at least, because, you know, of course, you never know. Who knows? Maybe the cabin or whatever the hell had like had like a window, and for all we know, I didn't have cur curtains. And for all we know, someone was like, "Who's in there?" So we never know, right? Just be safe, please. Please be safe. Please report anything. Um, keep doing it. If your boss house is retarded, keep reporting it. Keep keep saying do this right now, or else I'm gonna quit, and that's it. Just just learn to quit then, and make sure that they freaking hire someone with like a police check or something. Or a criminal record check, or just like make sure they're not, you know, crazy. Ugh. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Please be sure to subscribe if you're new. Be sure to comment down below, and that's gonna be it. Thank you guys for watching, and peace out.